Good morning. It is the 21st of March. My name is Greg Simpson. I'm a minister in the United Church of Canada, and this is your daily Lenten devotional. We're going to read from Paul's letter to the Philippians today, Philippians 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 11. And then I think a bit like yesterday, we're going to dive into the history a little bit. So, Let's read this scripture, and then we'll reflect on it. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. One thing that I think it's important we do anytime we read the letters from Paul, actually, anytime we read the scriptures at all, is in some ways to try and unlearn the stuff that we assume we know about the scripture. I I don't know about you, but I have spent the bulk of my life in church. I grew up in the Presbyterian Church in Canada. My mom was the organist, so I attended very frequently. I went to Sunday school. I went to youth group. I was quite involved in the church. And because of that, there are many, many things that I have just picked up. I have learned, I've heard spoken about, I've just, they've just become part of who I am. So each time I read scripture, there are assumptions that I make that if I don't spend the time to try and analyze them, then they can very significantly impact what I read. For example, reading this, there are a couple of particular phrases that jumped out at me that I'm purposely not going to talk about because they, to me, are not the real thrust of what this particular scripture is about. And particularly with the letters of Paul, there's something really special that we get to do. Like I said, we're going to dig into history a little bit. Just as a bit of a reminder, Paul was a a recent convert to Christianity, so we don't think that Paul actually interacted with Jesus. There's no particular historical evidence to show that, but Paul was somebody who was actually against the Christians by his own words, and then he was converted to Christianity. Again, this is before we even use the word Christianity. This is in like the... 40s, 50s, 60s um, common era. So like in that time frame. And he writes these letters to the different churches that he was involved in starting. And what I love about this and the other letters from Paul is they give us a glimpse into the early followers of Jesus long before it became an official religion, long before even it was much different than the Jewish and Hebrew history at the time, we get a window into what these early people were following and believing in because of Jesus Christ because they had heard stories. Some of them had even met him. Maybe not some of the Philippians, because that's over near Greece, and there's a very, very slim chance that any of them would have met Jesus. But these small groups that we would call churches, but looked nothing like what we call church today, of Christians who didn't even call themselves Christians, they call themselves followers of the way, every time we read a letter from Paul, 
I think we need to dive in and really look to see if we can see how they were behaving or what it was that was important to the church that soon after Jesus' death and resurrection. And this clearly, clearly speaks about humility about not thinking oneself better than others. Not just that this is some sort of finger-wagging morality tale like you ought to be less selfish. No, it's that Jesus lived in this fashion. I don't know, you probably won't be able to tell. Maybe I'll zoom in on it. But you can see that the words there are shaped more like a poem. You've got this chunk of prose in paragraph form, and then these words are shaped like a poem. Or some people even guess that those words might have been a hymn. We don't really particularly know. But this idea of Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, this in its poem or hymn form, these were words that were repeated as a creative piece of artwork. These were words that were shaped in ways that you could tell them again and again, and you could remember them because of the form. This means that this was a very important thing for them to remind themselves, that Jesus, who was the same nature as God, chose not to be, emptied himself of that to live here on earth. And certainly none of us are Jesus. None of us are trying to be Jesus, but we do use him as our example, as that shining beacon, the example for us to try to work towards. So what does that look like? It looks like humility. It looks like selflessness. And I think maybe this has even more depth for me today because at our church, we had a Bible study just yesterday and the underlying conversation of the entire Bible study was recognizing that greed and selfishness are really, really damaging to humanity. That when we look at some of the deepest, darkest evils in the world, greed and selfishness very often are underneath them all. And yet, 2,000 years ago, these people had it figured out. Now, clearly, we've had these words for 2,000 years, and have we really fixed society from a selfishness standpoint? Well, maybe not. But they sang a hymn, or they said a poem, about Jesus and his humility. And Paul repeated that to them and reminded them that this is one of the best ways to be just better people. He was inviting them, the, the people of Philippi, to live into that expectation or that, that un, unattainable perfection of behave, behaving like Jesus and being selfless, being humble, not seeing themselves as better than other people. What does that look like in our lives today? What does it look like if we individually, because it takes the individual first before society can change, if we individually don't see ourselves as any better than anyone else? I can tell you what it means for me. When I bump into somebody on the street who is really struggling with food availability or perhaps housing, I'm no better. I didn't do or say or be anything that put me in a different place. And so then how can I do anything but care for that individual rather than write them off as being, oh, they were too lazy or they choose not to have a job or it's the drugs or it's the drinking or all of these things that we come up with to justify. I'm no better. I don't think myself as better than them. Doesn't that totally change our relationship to one another? Doesn't it totally change our commitment to social justice, to standing up for the oppressed? When we recognize that all of the, the privilege and wealth and luxury that we might have, it doesn't make us better. It's not, I mean, sure, I might have worked hard for where I am, but still not better than. Can you imagine what this world could look like if maybe us first and then maybe the people around us and then maybe a few more people as it spreads grassroots style actually lived these words, these words of humility? Let's pray about that. 
Jesus, we are so blessed to have your model of humility. That being in the same nature of God, you chose to empty yourself and spend your life here on earth as a human. And we are so blessed that we get these words to remind us and these situations that we can step into, that we can choose to be humble, to be selfless, to realize that we are no better than anyone else. Now, I know in some ways that fights our human nature. So, Jesus, we're going to need your help. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us, to remind us, to fill us with humility, to empty us of self. This we pray in your loving name. Amen. Thank you, friends, so much for being here with me this morning, for joining in every day. It's so wonderful that we get to do this together. And I really feel like we're making a difference because I feel like some of you are taking some of the thoughts that we're having and saying, yeah, yeah, I can do that in my life. And if that's where you're at, I would love to know from you. I would love for you to share in the comments that, that this is changing things for you. Many of you have already shared that, and I appreciate that so much. If you've missed any previous videos, I invite you to click over there. You'll find them. You can subscribe up there. You can click the thumbs up in the bottom. I love you all so very much. I will see you again tomorrow with our next video. Bye for now.